You clicked on this video because you keep hearing about AI's magical time-saving superpowers. It's understandable. Everyone says that AI is revolutionary, but most people just feel stuck doing the same things anyway. I'm here to tell you that it's not that AI isn't ready, it's that you're probably being taught the wrong strategies. And the obvious stuff that nobody's mentioning is what's missing. So just give me 14 minutes and I'll walk you through five battle-tested AI strategies that combine with mindset shifts and actionable advice and that I've used personally to save thousands of hours. And I guarantee if you implement this, you will save 10 plus hours a week at least. By the way, I'm Mac and Cheesy. I built a million dollar business while having a full-time job by using these five strategies. And now we're in operations for an eight-figure tech startup where AI is woven into everything that we do. And so throughout the video, while I go through these strategies, I'll even show screenshots of me doing this with our team. And so the first strategy is AI is the quarterback, not a bench player. My guess is there's a bunch of use cases that you haven't even considered using AI for. And we have a saying in our company, AI is your teammate, but it isn't just some random bench player. It is the quarterback. I'm talking Tom Brady. I'm talking Patrick Mahomes. That's how important this thing is. Not even joking. We literally say, what did the quarterback say? This is a mindset shift that will make all the difference in saving time. Do not underestimate what AI can do. In fact, here are some examples of things that I initially didn't think to use AI, but once I did, I was able to complete it in a fraction of the time. One, cleaning up data in a spreadsheet, bot submissions, duplicates. You don't have to manually go through this. I've had it act as my real estate agent where I write up the exact specifications I need and then it goes on websites like Zillow and Redfin and finds me properties that meet this expectation. I have it sharing me recipes based on what I have in the fridge. Like, oh, I only have a couple of things. Give me something special. And I even have it doing my accounting at the end of the year where it'll categorize all my expenses into specific buckets for me. Now, the more you use it, the more you'll get out of it. And I just need you to think it's a quarterback. Use it as much as possible. And so what's the best forcing function to get you to use it? Make AI your default search engine. I use a plugin called ChatGPT search and if you go to my browser and you type something in it'll immediately go to chat GPT instead of Google now once you start using AI all throughout your day this next strategy is probably the most important out of all five strategy two: upskill the people around you so that you can save time now hit the like button if this sounds like you I couldn't get anything done because I was getting interrupted all day the truth is, it's not only about how you go about your day, it's about how everyone else around you does. And the ugly truth is that people steal your time every single day. Now there's an old saying, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Let's tweak that a little bit into what I call one of my Mac and mantras. Are we really gonna call it that? Yeah, we're gonna call it that. Complete a task for someone and they stop bothering you for a day. Teach someone how to complete a task and they will stop bothering you for a lifetime. And that's why you have to alter the environment around you so you can save time. So that means it's time to get the people around you familiar with AI. The first thing is whenever someone asks you a question, literally just say, what did AI say? Or what did ChatGPT say? This is the new form of, did you Google it? And it just trains them to expect you to ask this. So they'll start using AI before asking you. Then if they do ask you, share a conversation from ChatGPT. See, this is the Jedi mind trick stuff. By sharing them a ChatGPT conversation as the answer, this subtly says, hey, you should have asked ChatGPT. And it also shows them how to ask the question to get the answer. So they start learning new skills. And the third is share people documentation instead of the direct answer. This is the number one thing I did to automate my full-time job. I created documentation with answers to frequently asked questions. And by sharing those, people will learn to look there before asking you. And later in this video, I talk about the best ways to actually make this documentation. Now I know what you're thinking. If people around me, specifically at work, start getting better, doesn't that make me less valuable? That's false for a couple of reasons. First, if somebody just learning basic AI strategies and learning how to read a document makes you less valuable, I'm sorry, but you are probably on the chopping block anyway. And second, by upskilling the people around you, you become a leader and you become more valuable to whatever you're working on. But also, this isn't just work related. Use this technique with your friends, your partners, your wife, your kids, whoever. In fact, I will send my girlfriend chat GPT conversations so she stops asking me dumb questions. Sorry, Jess, hopefully you're not watching. Now, I guarantee if you take this seriously, you will save way over 10 hours a week. I mean, I do this all the time. People will send me phishing emojis because they're learning how to do these things. Now, upskilling the people around you and looking at AI as the quarterback instead of a bench player are two strategies that will be an absolute game changer. But if you implement these 
these three additional strategies that I'm about to go into, that's where you really, really make a difference. So strategy three, automate parts, not entire processes. Now I'm sorry to all the other AI creators out there who are saying you can automate an entire process, go to Cabo, drink a Mai Tai while the task gets completed. It's just unrealistic. And if that is your expectation, you will fail. And that's why I say you need to automate parts, not entire processes. And historically, this has been the strategy that has changed entire industries. Now look at Henry Ford. He didn't try and create the car all at once, but instead he broke each step down individually to complete the broader task. So think of your task like an assembly line. What is step one of a task? What is step two? And so on. If you isolate a single step in an entire process or task, your chance of actually seeing improvements will skyrocket. Here's an example. Let's say you were working at a marketing agency and you had to create an Instagram reel every single day. This task probably involves four steps at a high level. Idea generation, idea scripting, filming and editing. So you've broken down the steps and now you have to look at how you can use AI to improve each step in the process. Now there are thousands of tools out there and later in this video I'm going to be breaking down the mistake that most people make when choosing AI tools. But for this specific step let's say you're going to use a standard LLM like ChatGPT or Grok. So you can create a prompt that helps you complete this task. And if you don't know how to create a prompt I created a free resource in the description below. But one pro tip that is so simple and so obvious that I think everyone should do is they should ask AI to create an optimized prompt for them. Literally just say, create an optimized prompt for task. And it'll tell you exactly how you should prompt the AI to complete the task. So let's say we needed a prompt to help with idea generation and voila, we have a prompt that will help automate this step in the process. And now you've saved time on that single step, but that's fine because here's the secret. Don't try and do everything at once, do less. And if you do a task once a day, each time you're doing it, try and improve one or two steps in the process. And as you're doing that, build from there and document everything. For example, if you land on a prompt that's absolutely killer for step one in the process, save that prompt so the next time you do this task, you just use that right away. And after doing it multiple times, you'll start chipping away and automating the process. And the beauty is, you know it works because you've used it time and time again. And after three or four times doing the task, I guarantee you're gonna be able to do it in about half the time. And now before you go ahead and try and automate everything, break down all these processes, because I know you're excited, you need to consider these next two strategies. Strategy four is focus on what actually matters, not what you think matters is before automating it, think how much time will I actually save by automating this task? And here's a famous chart that programmers always look at when considering automation. You can pause this video and look further at it. But basically, if you're able to save 30 minutes on a task you do once a day, over five years, you'll save five weeks. So if you can automate this in one week, you just bought yourself four weeks. This may seem obvious, but way too often, people get excited to use these tools and start automating something that they don't actually spend that much time on. If a task takes you five minutes and you do it once a month and it took you two days to automate it, congratulations, you played yourself. The goal is to save time. It's not to do automation. Okay, so how do we make sure we're working on something that actually moves the needle? What gets measured gets managed and it's time to do an audit of your activity. Now here's a great way to do it. Use Activity Watch on your computer. It's an open source program, so it's entirely free and it'll look at where you're spending a time on each task. Once it's downloaded, just go about your day and I'll track all your activity. Then you'll be able to look at the data and see which tabs you spend time on, which program, and just seeing this information will make you more conscious of where you're spending your time and what you need to work on. My favorite metric is top window titles, which will show you the names of the windows that you're spending time on. My guess when you go and download this, it'll be obvious what you need to work on. You can export all the data, throw it in chat GPT, and it'll give you a response on what you need to work on. Now, before I get to the last tip, which is inspired by Navy SEALs, I have another tip on saving time that I think everyone should do. If you have a Mac or an iPhone, go to the screen time app. It'll show you how much time you're spending, but that's not the interesting part. Go to the metric that says pick up times. I find that if I literally just pick up my phone less, I use it less. And so I'm not doom scrolling on this thing. I literally just have to put it far away from me so I don't pick it up that often. And I focus on my pickup count, not my usage. Go check that out. Look at how much time you pick it up. It's freaking wild. And now the last strategy, which is inspired by Navy SEALs. This one's not very obvious. The strategy is move slow to move fast. 
AI is moving very, very, very fast. And as a result, there's new tools coming out every day to solve specific problems. As technologists, we're excited about these things and we want to implement everything. But I'm here to tell you, do not. Be slow to integrate new things. The more tools you use, the more complex it is, and the more things break. I call this operational debt. We want to save time. That's the goal. The goal isn't to use as many tools as possible. So instead, we want to borrow a mantra from Navy SEALs. And they say, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. As SEALs, they work in very stressful situations where they can feel rushed and easily make mistakes. But this mantra is used to remind SEALs that if you slow down and make the right choice, it'll actually save you time in the long run. And simplified, I like to say, move slow to move fast. And we say this internally at our company all the time. So how can you avoid losing hundreds of hours using the wrong tool and making systems that are way too complex? You need to use what I call the Home Depot shortcut. Picture this, you have two people walking in a Home Depot. You have person A and person B, and neither of them are Bob the Builder. Person A goes in and they refuse to ask for help because they think they know where they're going. They end up not finding what they're looking for. They look around for 30 minutes. They eventually find a section. They find six different variations of what they're looking for. Then they're not entirely sure what they need. They get a couple of options just to go home and realize that they didn't get the right thing. And now they have to go back to Home Depot again. That's person A. We want to be person B. They go in. They look for a worker and they ask for help. They know finding a worker may take some time, but they don't care. The worker is going to ask questions. What are you trying to do at home? What power tools do you have? What type of expertise do you have? And then they'll tell you exactly what you need. And they're going to give you a solution that you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of power tools for. And they'll probably save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And although what seemed like it would take longer, actually takes shorter in the long run. This is how you need to look at AI tools. And the thing with choosing AI tools is truly nobody is Bob the Builder because we're all learning it simultaneously. So how can you approach choosing the right tool for the job? First, pick a clear and single pain point. Call it summarizing docs or autofilling spreadsheets or generating ideas for Instagram. Go back to and watch the third strategy for more detail on this. Now, once you've identified the problem, it's time to go to step two. Research what's out there and make a list of features that you need. Then step three, look at what you're currently using. The truth is most software is implementing new features weekly, if not daily. And the best tool to use is the one that you're already using. And if your tool doesn't work, the way I look at things is I use AI to help me with my search. And as part of that search, I make sure to let it know what tools I currently use so it'll bias towards using them. I'll add at the end of my prompt, I currently use Zapier, Klaviyo, Shopify, ChatGPT, Notion, Discord, Super Even, Typhoon. I'll add this to the end of the prompt, which will list all the tools I'm using, and I tell it to bias towards those tools. And now if it can't figure out how to use it with these tools, it's time to look at a new AI solution. And this can sometimes be overwhelming because of how many tools there are out there. It's kind of a lot like when you're first walking in a Home Depot. And this is why I created a Notion database with a curated list of tools to use. It has costs, what you should use it for, and a bunch of info. Check out the link in the description and get access to that. And now by moving slow, you will inevitably move faster. Move slow to move fast. We're running out of time, but I wanted to just give you a quick bonus strategy. After auditing your day, after helping the people around you, automating parts, not processes, there's one thing you can do that is 100x more efficient than all of these things. And it's the simplest. It's removing something. Removing something is the original automation. It's the cutomation. Hate him or love him, this is how Elon Musk is so damn productive. But here's the big thing. You want to cut as much things as possible from your day to day. If you do something that you probably isn't needed, cut it. If you're doing something that ways, cut it. And the key is that you have to cut so much that you realize you have to add something back in. If you're never adding things back into your daily tasks, that means you haven't cut enough. If you eliminate things from your day to day, you will instantly save time. OK, so those are five specific AI strategies and one bonus tip that if you use and take seriously, you will 100 percent save over 10 hours a week. Remember, your time is precious and I'm here to help you save it. Now, if you like this video, you're going to love this one. I'll see you in the next one. Let's.